Department of Transportation, how much of our fleet of automobiles in this state can be run on consolidated natural gas? We all want electric cars. Of course, they cost a fortune and they're about that big. But the day will come and we'll have a battery breakthrough, and boy, I'd love it to come from Battelle, where we can power cars and have big cars and, and, and cheap modes of transportation. And I think the car is going to be one of the most amazing, changing the things we're going to see in our society over the course of the rest of my lifetime. Smart cars is where we're heading, hopefully powered by something other than what we have to depend on that comes perhaps from the Middle East or Venezuela, where we got to a really bad guy running that country. So we've got the opportunity of vehicles and something that we can move on and can we convert part of our fleet to CNG at this point and partner with a private sector company who might build these cars and maybe some of them in Ohio create the filling stations and get rolling on this and lead the country. Why not? And then co-generation. Can you imagine that we have a situation in this country where businesses have waste heat and they can't capture it in some cases because of a federal rule that says if you capture some of it, you have to upgrade your entire facility? Talk about a lack of common sense, Mary Taylor. We're going to look at cogeneration, waste heat. It's an important part of where we need to go. Now, here's the problem. Coal people don't like natural gas people. Natural gas people don't like coal people. Renewable people don't like natural gas. They're, not, they're really kind of wary about cogeneration because it might take away some of their subsidies or whatever it is. And, and uh, so everybody fights with everybody. Um, one of the things I was most proud of was not the budget deal so much in 97 as it was that we can get along. Republicans and Democrats and people with different philosophies, we can get along and put the country first. I come back into this job, and my goodness, the polarization here, how about the polarization in Washington? Really working great, isn't it? Missing out on a $4 trillion deal, look what's happened to us. The problem that we are increasingly having is we're all siloed, not all of us, but we're too often siloed. We're too often interested in self-interest. Folks, you can only wear so many suits and eat so many steaks every day. And you know, I learned from my faith, the pursuit of material wealth, I mean, you can answer for it. When you put material wealth ahead of human progress and human compassion, I tell you, it's a serious charge. It could be an indictment, not here but the world yet to come. You know, what we need in, a, in our country and what we need in our state is for people to say, I'm going to fight like crazy with you and I'm going to make my argument, but at the end of the day, we're going to figure out a way to have progress. You know, maybe my stock price is not going to be quite as far ahead as, of yours as it is, but you know what? Maybe we can look back and say, we gave a little bit. All of us gave a little bit, and as a result, we raised the whole bar. That's what we're searching for here. So we're going to go two days here, and we're going to, I'm, I'm actually going to sit and listen for two days. That will, in and of itself, will be a miracle. Um, <laughs> but think about this. I don't want to have a conference just to have a conference. I don't, you know, you got to understand with this administration, we're not interested much in politics. That should be clear to everybody. You know how, what we do? See, there's a problem. How do we fix it? There's a policy we want to drive to. How do we get it done? That's what we do. Isn't it a breath of fresh air to realize that, you know, we're not, nobody's going to game us. Nobody's taking advantage of us. Nobody can buy us. It just doesn't work that way. We've all been hungry for this. That's why these people are all giving up their own private sector jobs and they've come in to work in Ohio. So think about this. Why don't we fashion an energy policy that's creative, imaginative, and where we work together? Why don't we get some peace at the end of the day among gas and coal? Why don't we get to our renewable friends, our environmental friends? We've got them here. We brought them here on purpose. We want Henry to be here. We want him to raise hell, okay? But at the end of the day, 
At the end of the day, we've got to get together. We've got to get the lions to sleep with the lambs a little bit. And if we can do this, if we can figure out a way to effectively develop renewables, if in fact we can modify what we have on renewables without people having a cow, if we can get the coal and the gas to work together, and now this one may be impossible, get the utilities to actually like one another. That's going too far. Uh, <laughs> but if we can do this and develop our, our, our Utica shale in an environmentally, we've got to do it right. We can't let fear run us, but we've got to do it right. We've got to jump up when things are wrong, we've got to call it like it is. If we can develop the shale and get the coal and the gas together and do the renewables and electrify or gas some of our cars and train our workers, Ohio can have a low-cost, sustainable, independent, and strong energy policy that will lift Ohio and create jobs and help our people and, most important, send a message to the rest of the country. If they can do it in Ohio, why can't we do it in Nevada? Why can't we do it in Florida? Or why can't we do it as America? My goal is always to outperform the, Amer the national economy. We're going to get there? I don't know. We're going to sure try. Our goal now is to create a, a model and a policy so that America can be stronger, less dependent on countries that we at times cannot depend upon, Give our, give our young people a vision of the future. Make America stronger while we make Ohio stronger. Thank you all very much.